Hello, I'm Dan Burr. Thanks for joining us. The sudden blast of winter across B.C. has many people hunkering down indoors. But for those who don't have a home, these conditions can be deadly. Lindsay Duncombe tells us how cities across the province are responding and how those living outside are coping. This is how Douglas Brooks spent the night as the temperature dipped to minus 13, feeling more like minus 24 with the wind. What did you do last night? What do you mean what I do last night? I shivered. Bitter cold compounding the cruelties of living on the street. Nobody helps you. Nobody laughs at you. I, everything I had that I've worked so hard for the past week to get has been stolen from me. We call 911 and paramedics arrive to help Brooks get somewhere warm. Busy, they say, with calls just like this. When cold creates crises, unexpected frustrations like Dave Jenkins' frozen padlock inspire perspective. Um, I was lucky I had somewhere to stay last night. You know, I'm inside, so I, I was okay. So I feel for everyone else that's staying outside. Vancouver hasn't been this cold since 1937. The chill extends across the province. Minus 39 in Prince George, minus 10 in Victoria. That's a record. Forgive the West Coasters then if they don't exactly have the right gear. Uh, well, I bundled up as best I can, but I wasn't really quite ready for it to get cold quite as fast as it did. Especially tough for crews working outside. It's brutal. The wind's blowing, it's cold, everything you touch is cold. Um, often uh, the materials are wet and it's soggy and it's just miserable. It is one of the worst days you want to be out. The Arctic air blew in late Thursday afternoon, bringing a couple centimeters of snow, enough to complicate commutes across the lower mainland and prompt calls for better preparation. This doesn't look good on the province. It doesn't look good on municipalities when people are simply doing something as simple as going home and it's taking them five, six hours when it should be an hour. Looking ahead to what is going to be another cold night, there are increased emergency shelter beds and warming centers here in Vancouver and similar programs being activated right across the province. Lindsay Duncombe, CBC News, Vancouver. Let's go to Darius Madavi, who gives us a first glance at the weather and the temperatures. Right, so we still have these extreme cold warnings across BC and into parts of the, uh, much of the prairies, really the entire province of Alberta and Saskatchewan. Uh, and those aren't planning to let up anytime soon. Now, the soonest we could expect to see one of these warnings drop would be these Arctic outflow warnings on the coast, which at least here in uh, the greater Vancouver area and for greater Victoria, we might expect to see it come down as soon as tomorrow afternoon. As those winds come down, that Arctic air starts to retreat a little bit further east, head a little bit back uh, uh, up north. Meanwhile, some of it will be heading down into the states, meaning temperatures there are expected to drop uh, qu considerably. Now, uh, with these strong winds that we are seeing in some parts of the coast, wind chill values are going to feel much, much colder than the actual posted temperatures. So make sure to keep that in mind as well, even as you are uh, planning for temperatures that do look cold, it'll feel much colder. Now, tomorrow we do start to see those temperatures come up a little bit, like I said, on the coast. Now, minus six for Vancouver, still 10 degrees colder than it would normally be this time of year. So, you know, depends on your definition of, of warm but warmer at least uh, now as we continue to see this arctic air mass retreat over the next couple of days those highs will continue to come up but for parts of the province especially up in the northeast they will stay very low for quite some time so not until early next week midweek even we're going to start to see those temperatures start to return to normal but even what we're seeing here this is 15 degrees 20 degrees colder than what would usually be this time of year so very much so not typical uh, weather that we're having now, in terms of the lows, we also need to look at those because it's very concerning, especially as we heard from Lindsay from people outside. But also, just as you're at home, you need to keep in mind how cold things are going to get. Make sure you're warm. Try and avoid any burst pipes or anything like that, uh, if you can. And then we're going to see that those wind chill values, like, again, see a closer look at these later in the hour. But you can see uh, it's going to be quite a while before we see any sort of return to normal, even into late next week. Okay, Darius, thanks very much. Thank you. Temperatures are falling even further away from the water and putting people's lives at risk in the Fraser Valley. As Mira Baines shows us, shelters are filling up, but longtime residents and businesses are stepping up to help those in need. Frigid temperatures in the Fraser Valley with wind chill bringing temperatures down into the minus 20s. My fingertips are frozen. Okay, how are you keeping warm? A uh, hot pocket and a shelter. 
tents fortified on Gladys Avenue in Abbotsford as people hunker down in the cold. Outreach workers provide some relief, bringing gloves and warm drinks. Today we've got mocha, some hand warmers, socks, blankets, whatever else people need. He says people are risking their safety trying to keep warm outside. There's a couple of instances that uh, people have got burned out uh, with their tents and their camps. But they're just trying the best that they can to stay warm. Another big concern is frostbite, which can happen at sub-zero temperatures and require medical help, but in serious cases, amputation. Signs that frostbite is actually setting in, your skin might turn whitish or grayish in color. It might feel kind of firm or numb or waxy, in, and you might actually start lacking any kind of sens sensation in that area. Hypothermia can also be caused by prolonged exposure to colder temperatures and can be fatal. Even shelters that are full are keeping their doors open. We have an extreme weather shelter that uh, they're supposed to have 30 people at the max and they were at 50 last night, right? Then, because you just don't turn people away, you can't. The bone chilling cold in Abbotsford has this community group started by sick immigrants mobilizing efforts to drop off blankets and warm clothing. Now it's time to give back to, to, the, to, to the community and society. So now that's why we are working. Minus 10, minus 8, uh, we saw a couple of times, but this is really cold, minus 24. Across the Fraser River, a family-owned restaurant is offering free gloves, cha, with curry and rice at its BC and Alberta restaurants. People are becoming in the super stoked. It's just nice for people to just come in and kind of warm up. It's so cold outside. People are hoping for the best as the Arctic grip is expected to start easing after Saturday. Mira Baines, CBC News, Abbotsford. Temperatures in Prince George plunged to minus 35 Celsius today with wind, fill, wind chill factor dropping it below minus 42. Canada Post issued a red delivery service alert in the city, meaning it stopped delivering for the day. It also issued a yellow service alert in the BC interior, meaning deliveries will go ahead, but they may be delayed. Environment Canada has issued extreme cold weather warnings for both regions into the weekend. And in Kelowna, people were treated to the rear side of what looked like a mini tornado over Lake Okanagan this morning. Environment Canada, though, says the phenomenon is more like a water spout. They call it a steam devil caused by the minus 20 Arctic airflow over the relatively warm lake water. They say after a warm December, the sudden temperature change has made the interior ripe for interesting weather occurrences. Are similar to sort of the dust devils that we might see over dry land rather than a tornado which is caused by a severe thunderstorm and those tend to be associated with much stronger winds. Unlike a tornado, steam devils do not pose a risk of damage but people are still warned to stay away from them if you happen to be out on the water. First it was too warm to ski, now a number of ski hills in BC have been forced to close because it's too cold. Kicking Horse Mountain Resort in Golden, Apex in Penticton, Whitewater in Nelson, and Panorama Ski Resort in Panorama were all shut down today due to forecast temperatures below minus 30 with wind chill. Kimberly Alpine Resort delayed opening today and has closed night skiing until Saturday. Some Okanagan resorts like Silver Star and Big White are limiting service because of the cold temperatures as well as strong winds. Skiers at Cypress Mountain, meanwhile, were bundling up against the chill. I like it. We have been missing the snow for a long time. Uh, we used the snow last month, but uh, today's my first run, actually. I just put on a lot of layers, five layers on, uh, fleece pants, snow pants, gloves. Conditions on Cyprus are expected to stay, stay well below freezing into the weekend with more light wind and light and snow expected into the middle of next week. People who respond to home repair emergencies are ge gearing up for a very busy weekend. One plumbing and heating expert says that the most common calls he's getting are concerns about furnaces not working and frozen pipes. He says your heating system is probably fine, just overworked after being turned down throughout the warmer start to winter. But thawing pipes can be serious. If in doubt, always call a pro. You don't need a lot of water to do a lot of damage mm -hmm. and to have an insurance claim, and that's what you want to avoid right now especially in times like this where it's really busy and companies are really busy. If you have any concern that something's not right, reach out to a professional right away and have them come give their advice to you and see if they can get that 
get that faucet from, from being either unfrozen or, or to stop dripping. He says you can leave taps, water taps on slightly to prevent freezing. Well, if it's not the pipes, it's the roads. One Vancouver man noticed cars struggling to make it up a hill outside his home in Mount Pleasant. So he decided to lend a helping hand, pushing cars one by one to safety. Being in stressful situations, it sucks. And we, we all know, and especially driving, going home, and you're sliding down, you think you're going to hit cars. It's, it's a nightmare. So um, I would, yeah, I mean, I would do it again. And it just, it's, it's just an easy thing you can do. Jamal Hamoud says he's lived in Alberta and knows how stressful it can be to drive in wintry conditions, especially when you're not used to it. He does admit he also didn't want the sliding cars to hit his vehicle parked on a hill. He managed, with the help of a few other snow angels, he was outside for about an hour in the storm and in the end helped move about eight cars up the hill. Good on him.